I'm very excited to be here, in part uh, because I'm going to perform two miracles right now. The first one is um, a thing which I hope you will all join me in conjuring, which is uh, an imaginary slide. I want you all to imagine an artwork by Susan Stilton because I didn't have the foresight to pull it up, um, which is from 2016. Imagine a pink postcard that says, your future is the sunlight that will scatter them like cockroaches into the darkness of the past. Um, and that is a uh, translation from British and US uh, psychological units bombing that over Iraq in 2003-2004. And the second miracle is that later when you watch this online, if you were to watch the event after the fact, I will be a disembodied floating head on this backdrop. So I look forward to performing that for you. So that's one miracle short of sainthood. Um, so I'm going to start the marathon um, with a very serious question. It's a hurdle which uh, may trip us up. But do you believe in miracles? Because I don't. And uh, I'm just saying that there's no amount of magical thinking that can uh, magic us out of the various economic crises and environmental crises and injustices and cruelties and trumpetings and Brexits. Um, so I'm sorry that my opening salvo is such a damn squib. Um, but first, I guess I should contextualize a little bit. I'm not a particularly skeptical person. Uh, I've always been more of a Mulder than a Scully. I want to believe. And I reject uh, the fate of being trapped in the aspect of, a, uh, of empirical thought, basically. And as a terrestrian existing in three plus one dimensions, when I say I don't believe in miracles, I mean I don't believe in events which defy natural laws. Because even our most sophisticated understanding of those laws is probably, and I am making an incredibly uneducated guess here, uh, cosmically pedestrian. So here we are at this diluvial moment where the borders of what is normal are being washed away into the unknown. I'm thinking specifically of phenomena like hexagons on Jupiter and snow in the summer, and as I'm going to discuss in a moment, uh, the blind suddenly seeing. And therefore, to this particular worm's eye view, uh, miracles cannot exist. They cannot exist because they require some kind of penal code of possibility. And our conception of the possible is too narrow to classify anything as impossible. So, as this terrestrian who does not believe in miracles, I will say that I do believe in the miraculous. That is, the miraculous is something completely separate to a miracle. Something so omnipresent as to be mundane. Something we don't notice unless we're tender to it, unless the senses are pricked, hearts hyper-empathetic to the unexpected and unseen. So, um, I'm sure I'm not the only one in this room who suffers from panic attacks. You may have experienced these things as a sort of temporal blindness uh, in which the everyday becomes completely unreal. Uh, it's as if one is encased in some kind of gelatin, fossilized in fear. And during one of these attacks, there's nothing but the most primordial feeling of blindness, helplessness, paralysis, it's the opposite of out of body, it's total burial. Now I don't know about yours, but mine were brought on in part by a misjudged cocktail of chemicals and in part by a slow moving catastrophe of climate change, uh, that most epic human fail, or maybe more appropriately, uh, a failure most epic. It was anxiety about a human future on this planet one which seems impossible to imagine from this position. Uh, it's as if the timeline we had been following into the turn of this millennia were drawn in disappearing ink. The projections of the 20th century futurisms turning out to be Fata Morgana, boomers taking us down the wrong path to drown when the tide came in. 
In those moments of panic, which seemed to turn to a thousand days, to years of bone-throbbing winter, to a terrifying eternity of heart palpitations, I saw that the future I was promised was erased and washed away in a flood of human folly and a self-inflicted deluge of disaster. So for the sake of this marathon, I don't want to keep on performing this pessimism. It's a little bit boring for everyone, including me. Uh, and I want to attempt optimism. I want us all to escape the crushing event horizon and the drain of doubt, if only for these two days, and to create a refuge squinting into some kind of brightness and perform a collective act, one of alternative projection of conjuring sight even if we don't have the organs for it yet. And what I wish for during the panic attacks that I mentioned with total ardence is a miraculous awakening to free the body of now, to experience an unblinding. Traditionally, to give sight to the blind is the miracle. It's a classic of the genre, a staple in the cupboard of spectacle, Giving sight to the blind is the go-to miracle of miracles. To conjure sight, foresight, hindsight, insight, in a bleak moment of blindness, a collective kindling, a stoking of sparks, lightning in the dark, a clearly lit emergency exit out of the historical dead end we've wandered into, a place without wonder where domestic cats garner more interest than biblically scaled catastrophes. So here, today, I hope that we will light flames to illuminate an occulted future. That impossible, blurred horizon over which the twin cataracts of fear and fact have grown. And this is why we need that inverse, incurable, but no less miraculous figure, the blind seer to lead. Alain Sixou is one, she who woke to find her myopia obscuring a golden statue of Joan of Arc a young one thrusting their sword in the direction of the future. This is the same person who found herself compelled to write, I do not believe in miracles. One must not believe in miracles. If you believe in miracles, then there are none. And yet this apostate regained her vision in a great and unexpected unblinding. The unblinding, which is also a scientific term for the unraveling of data. A dry accounting exercise or the wet reading of entrails. It was at CERN on the discovery of the Higgs boson that I first heard the term of unblinding. As I'm not a scientist, you'll probably have guessed. Its poetry lent to the mythos around this mystery cult. Englert and Higgs providing, presiding as chief haruspices at the moment of revelation for the select few who understood these facts were translated, translated as, the changing, as changing the rules of reality. So it can be intuited that by the most basic definition of miracles, by their most basic definition, miracles are unnatural events and inexplicable phenomena, occurrences which abide within the delineated boundaries of scientific explanation. And when the unblinding happening, happened, those boundaries had to be redrawn. And so now the paths to that which is coming must be retraced and the definition of miracle rewritten. Together, maybe we can perform this act of seeing, an acknowledgement to raise the blinds, take off the fold, and look into the face of fear, that mind killer, that little death. So thank you.